everyone this is Ross and in today's video I have a real special fig that I want to review for you guys today this is Col de Don Blanc and it is without a doubt my tastiest fig and I, I want to just go over with you guys the the fig itself we're gonna do a tasting um, but first I want to talk to you guys about the tree talk to you guys about the variety the different characteristics because this is a really spe a really special fig and anyone growing figs and has many varieties of them will be able to tell you the difference and realize that this is just unique. This is a really special thing that really deserves more attention than it's been given in the past. Um, I think people will kind of underestimate it and kind of go after different varieties that just might be a bit more expensive. Now that Col de Dame is, is quite common now in the United States as an example or common within the, uh, the fig community. The Col de Dom figs, by the way, originate from Spain, I believe, and they're named after a lady's neck. That's the name of the Col de Dom. When you, trans when you translate that into English, you can kind of see that's a, like a really good characteristic of the fig is that it produces quite a bit of a, a long and almost sort of fat neck. So that's a really interesting characteristic, but what I think is more of a leading indicator that you have a Col de Dom is actually the pulp. And what I mean by the pulp is that in all figs, there's these female flowers in here, very individual, usually large in number. You could have around 300 flowers, individual flowers within a fig. The Col de Doms, and there's many Col de Doms, right? There's, you know, one that's uh, black, one that's gray. So you have Col de Dom Noir, Col de Dom Gris. You also have Col de Dom Ramada, which has stripes on it. There's a number of them that have been collected and preserved in Spain. But what I mean by the pulp is that it has very few female flowers. And so it has these really small acnes. So they're also small in size and few in number. And that creates a really interesting texture that we're gonna to get to in a moment. It has a superior texture to any other fig. The flavor is also quite complex. So uh, we'll also get to talk about the flavor, but in my opinion, it's the best fig I have, not necessarily for the flavor, but for the texture. It really brings the whole thing together. It creates a really unique eating experience, and then it's very thick, very gooey. You're kind of like eating a, a fig cake. You're eating like a baked good, uh, like pancake batter. It's so thick. Um, that it really is something that I think a lot of you guys should experience. And for those people that have been growing a number of varieties for a number of years, you know, not just one or two varieties, you'll be able to immediately, they can immediately tell the difference between a Col de Dom and something else that maybe you've only been growing for one or, you know, for your whole life. Let's say you've only had one or two varieties. If you were to then get this Col de Dom, you would, you would immediately realize, oh, okay, I get it. You know, this is one of those figs that, like the Black Madeira as an example, or like some other really tasty figs, you're not gonna really understand it unless you try it yourself. I'm gonna try my hardest to help you guys understand it, but. So, because Col de Dom comes from Spain, it's really a Mediterranean fig. It's well adapted there. If you live in the Mediterranean or a climate similar to the Mediterranean, you know, even California, parts of California could be quite comparable. This fig is gonna do incredible for you. Um, it also would probably do even better in higher heat. So even like a warmer part of California, maybe Arizona, um, it holds up really well to the heat. It's a commercial fig over there. And this is not only a commercial fig in Spain, but other people are growing this throughout Europe as well. It's not just people from Spain, you know, this is a fig that's grown in Italy, in France, all kinds of Mediterranean countries that really value it, not just for the flavor and the, and the texture and the, you know, those qualities that a chef can use, but also your day-to-day -day fresh consumption is just off, off the charts. And it really sells well because the fig just holds up well in shipment. It's just, you don't have to really pick it super ripe. You know, it doesn't look that great on the bottom here because we've gotten some rain recently. But it's got a really nice exterior 
or synconium, it's quite thick. It really holds up to shipment manipulation. Um, it also doesn't seem to detach very easily, although some of them have. So it's a fig that naturally can be picked a bit earlier, which is really a good quality because when we pick figs commercially, you actually have to pick them somewhere around 60 to 70% ripe, and then you ship them. And that kind of helps them keep that hardness about them. Uh, they're not as susceptible to manipulation and, and different things like that. So for me, this fig is not a fig that I even let it really go very long. You know, I don't have to really let this thing go and shrivel up on the tree and really develop those flavors. It gets those flavors honestly after swelling. So if this is a, a fig that probably just swelled yesterday or the day before, it maybe only takes about five or six days before I pick it. So that's a really nice characteristic of this tree. Another characteristic is that, again, I mentioned about the rain. It holds up to the rain just fine. I mean, it's really one of the better varieties, believe it or not. Even though it comes from the Mediterranean, it's one of the better varieties um, dealing with the rain. You know, and I get plenty of it here, 40 inches of rain um, every year. And you can see in here, like this is from a recent rainstorm, all this water that's sitting on top of this bag, trying to keep all that water out to actually have less water. I mean, that's, that's how much I've been trying to, you know, try to get less water in my environment. So certainly this is a good representation of what rain resistance can be and split resistance. It has both. Um, so overall, in a large variety of climates, believe it or not, it can do well. And the only issue I have with it is that sometimes in the early spring here is that it just doesn't perform well. I think it's really used to and adapted well in springs that are a bit warmer. Um, it just takes a long time to really get going. Um, it definitely takes 90 days from pinching. So the reason we're in early August right now, today is August 9th, but I've actually had some I think that ripened August 1st. Here in Zone 7A in the Philadelphia area, um, we have warm summers, but pretty cool springs. And our spring just really, I would not be able to ripen this fig here in this location without some help, without the help of the greenhouse. Um, I wake these trees up, because we're growing them in pots, you can see, I wake these trees up, I put them in the greenhouse and wake them up in about March 15th. That's when this tree woke up. We kick the heater on, and then with the help of just how a greenhouse normally works, um, we're getting temperatures at night above 60, and I try to keep that consistently above 60. Um, and then these trees get off to a really nice head start. And in order for me to get fruit off of this, uh, at this point in time, I had to have pinched this in early May. So what I did was I came in the greenhouse walked inside of there and actually pinched off the tips of these branches in early May. Otherwise, I wouldn't have fruit at this point. Um, and I remember specifically actually pinching this in early May. So yeah, you could argue that it's a variety that takes a while to get going, but it does actually fruit for you within 90 days after the fruits have formed. So that's a really nice characteristic, believe it or not. Um, but however, I have a feeling, and this is you know, based off of a couple observations of friends and, and myself as well, is that this tree just does so much better in an area with a warmer spring. You know, that's kind of what the coldenom or what the greenhouse is doing to the coldenom is that we're replicating a environment that's quite warm with the greenhouse. The issue though is that I take them out sometime in early June, and early June still is not that warm and when we put them out here on the patio amongst my other trees the coldenoms really struggle uh, i think they just don't really like the cold or that that shock of temperature nearly as much as other varieties and you know it's obviously important that when we take these out we don't want to you know take them out and get them sunburned right because you got them in the greenhouse we want to adjust them to full sun but also i think it's important to Keep them away from the wind, you know. I take them out on a, on a less windy day, but also on a warmer day. And I'm thinking when I have more space in the greenhouse, I probably won't take the cold adams out 
even by you know June 1st, I think I'll probably take them out in my location. Maybe I'll have to wait even until maybe June 15th or July 1st. You know, uh, I think it's really a benefit to the production, to the health of the tree, to the variety itself. I just think it needs a lot more heat earlier in the season than than most. In the Mediterranean, in Spain as an example, this fig will ripen in the ground, when planted in the ground, not in a container, September 1st. So if this thing's ripening in the ground September 1st, uh, you know, we're gonna have some issues here and a lot of you guys are gonna have some issues trying to get this thing to ripen. So you really need to have the ideal climate and I think this is one that just really has been well adapted to a Mediterranean type climate. Um, I don't know exactly how old these varieties are, but there's a number of them, right? There's Col de Nom Blanc, which you see here, which is the green skinned one. There's Col de Nom Noir and Col de Nom Gris. So there's a black one, um, there's a gray one, and there's also a number of others that you can kind of get into. But for the most part, they have a similar flavor very similar flavor and very similar texture and it's all really about the exterior color that's really the biggest difference between the four i just mentioned anyway um, i want to taste it now for you guys so i'm going to put you guys down and we can talk about the flavor of this particular fig um, again you know for me it's been quite productive but my tree is actually quite old <laughs> It's got a nice size to it. It has a nice form to it. We've actually talked about specifically about this tree in a prior video. Um, you know, what it's like and what I'm trying to aim for when trying to get the right form on my potted figs. Uh, we're also growing this, I wanna mention actually, in the greenhouse. We have one planted in the greenhouse for greenhouse commercial production. That's the end goal with this, or with the trees in the greenhouse. Um, yeah, so it's been productive. It is rain resistant. Uh, it's, I mean, it's probably not hardy at all. I don't know uh, if anyone really has tested cold it on Blanc, but I do know that there is a grower 20 minutes from me in zone 7A that's growing cold it on Grease. And this is the real cold it on Grease. Um, he's also growing uh, a fake version of that, which has been spread around and there's been a whole mix up with that. but. He is actually growing the real Col de Dom Grease. And it is hardy, uh, or I don't know how hardy it is actually, but maybe he wraps it, I'm sure he does, now that I think about it. And with wrapping it, or maybe without protection, he's able to get this fig to ripen in the ground, in this climate. And I'm sure he doesn't get many, but you know, that's a little piece of information there. Um, so that's, ma that's mainly it, you know, the, there's the production, we have just how slow it kind of gets started in the season. Um, it takes 90 days after pinching. Um, you know, it's just your standard, actually a really good late season variety in terms of rain resistance and how well it performs here. It's actually among the, the top choices that I have of my late varieties. So, let me taste this now for you guys. We've talked enough about the fig at this point. Um, the pulp is really something special. Like I said, there's very few acnes in here and you can actually not really visibly see them all that well. Let me see if I can open this up and then show you guys. So these acnes here, you know what? Let me switch hands. So these acnes in the fig are usually these white things um, that you can see, the white flower parts. You can see one right, right th there. So that is an acne right there. But for the most part, you can't even really see the other ones. There's so few in here and they're so small in number or so small in size and, sh and, sm and uh, few in number that it really changes that texture. And again, that's the female part, the female flower within the synconium of the fig. Um, there's certainly more of them actually now that I put it back like this, you can visibly see more of them, but that's what this fig has going for it. So let me taste it now. Hmm. It's really good. So it's actually quite, um, 
it's got a really nice sugar content in terms of like it, it really is quite a sugar fig there's not much honey in there there's not much uh, syrup in there um, but you get this really sharp attack of sugar and it's not too sweet but it's a noticeable sweetness for sure and then you have a really complex berry flavor that's attached with that so this is really eating like a kind of like a sugar fig a sugar berry fig but the texture again is so thick that sometimes I feel like I'm not even eating a fig it's just really good um, you can also peel it not really the most successfully way but you can see I'm taking off the skin right here off of the pulp but personally I bet you the skin has its own little flavor let me try the skin yeah I mean the skin is mostly melon flavor most of that figgy melonness that you can pick up man it's so good and to get this variety here in this climate this early is really a special treat it really is I mean they're they really don't go down too significantly in quality once the temperatures cool down a bit but certainly at this time of the year this is like unbeatable this fig um, I don't have a single fig out of 200 varieties yet that is tastier than this this is my tastiest fig um, it has a complex awesome flavor but it's really all about that texture and for me I, I just have to recommend this one I have to talk about it I have to tell you guys you should get this this is without a doubt if I lived in California if I didn't have a cold anom, I don't know what I would I don't know what I'm doing I'm gonna be honest if I lived in a warm part of California excuse me you know if I lived in Arizona if I lived in the Mediterranean you know you guys have it made if I can have an in-ground tree of this whew, I don't know if I would grow any other fig uh, in all honesty because uh, if you can have this in the ground I would just make copies of this there's no other reason to have another fig um, it's just that good so um, yeah I want to thank everybody here for watching this one uh, I really can't say enough and I'm sure we're gonna talk about this fig we, we talk about it a lot actually but we'll talk about it as you know the, the season progresses we can comp compare more varieties to others and really have uh, this is the base of you know what is the greatest fig I have so um, you know that's just what I'm comparing all these other ones to but anyway guys thank you so much for watching this one if you know somebody who's um, interested in growing figs share this video with them this is a real special variety and you know I don't normally do this but I do have believe it or not this variety for sale I have a 